Hi everyone, I'm Galen McCormick and I teach at the Eastman Community Music School here in Rochester, New York. This video tutorial is for the Schubert Rosamund Overture and it's for people going to the All County Junior High Orchestra this March or anyone who wants to prepare the Rosamund Overture. I'm going to spend the first part of this tutorial walking us through measures 1 through 100 and kind of stopping and starting and explaining like why I do things the way I do and I'm working off that bowed master part that you all got on the yellow sheets so if you haven't transferred it over you might want to just practice off those sheets with me but definitely move that into your part before you get there please. All right let's look right at the beginning it says andante and if you don't know that word already it just means walking literally means walking. So I think of a tempo that I could walk to without <gasps> and also without like <sighs> falling asleep, right? So I've picked out a tempo of 60. Comfortable, right? We could walk to that. And let's start at the beginning. I'm going to start in half position because I see a B flat coming up in measure four and I just want to get there. Ready? One, two, three. See, there's a breath mark there because you have another down bow and also you're going to release this as an orchestra. So if you want to go back to first position during that open E is a really good time to do it. I think I kind of want to go back to first position, I'm kind of on the fence about it. I think I'm going to demonstrate the next line in first position, but check it out at the end of the next line, you've got to get ready to go back to half position. Why? Measure 14. We have another low F natural. We need to get ready for that. But that whole second line we could do in first position. So if you're someone who likes first position, go ahead, go back there. Let's do the second line. One, two, Triple it, triple it. Okay, hang on one second with me. Did you hear what I was doing? I was subdividing, right? I don't have very classy things for subdivision besides cha-cha-cha, triple lit. I bet you have awesome things. Do you like pepperoni for um, 16th notes? Do that. Here's measure 14 if we do it that way. Pepperoni, pepperoni, pepperoni. Strawberry, 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 strawberry. You've got to get yourself going ahead of time. Don't expect the orchestra to pull you along. Mm -mm, that's not what bass players do. We are the rhythm rock of the orchestra. We tell them what to do. Only they don't know it. <laughs> They're always following us. Let's start back at number 20. It's going to be up bow. We're going to subdivide our way through 21. And then when we get to number 24, you see how it's G and D? There's nothing that says divisi, right? So we're going to play that. And it says forte piano, so that's a real quick accent. Mostly I just think piano with a quick tap on it. Don't worry if you don't catch them both equally and you don't sustain them both equally. Between a whole section of basses doing it, it'll all walk, it'll just work out in the wash. Uh, what else do I need to tell you? Just keep your subdivisions going. Do you need sixteenths? Pepperoni? Do you need triplets? Strawberries? However you like to say it, doesn't matter to me. Here we go at number 20 and we're going to start up though. One, two, three.
The last thing I did, you see how I was just scrubbing the bow? You can make the face too if you want. Um, is a tremolo. Doesn't have to really be fast. You don't want to go. Right? That's three strokes. Yeah. If it's two strokes, it's sixteenth notes. If it's one stroke across the stem, it's an eighth note. But when it's three, it's almost always tremolo. If you're not sure, ask the principal. If you are the principal, ask the conductor and do it outside of rehearsal time. Don't ever waste rehearsal time on something really simple like this. When you're sitting in the section, if your stand partner is going like I just was, you pick a different speed. Maybe you go. Okay, so you don't want to match up. You just want a big blah, 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 blah of sound there. The next section at 32, allegro, which actually means happy, right? It's not very prescriptive of exactly what it's going to be. So allegro is going to be bright and happy. It's in cut time. So it's going to be conducted in two. And you can see how there's a quarter rest pickup. So somebody in the orchestra, I feel like it's the flute, clarinet, or oboe has a pickup. I don't remember anymore. I picked a tempo of 100 to do this at. Let me change my metronome real quick. I think it actually goes just slightly faster than this when we do it in RPO. I wanted to pick a kind of gentle practice tempo. We're going to do this tempo from 32 to 64. And I actually am just going to play through this, basically. When we hit 56, it should be Arco. And I know some people have had that handwritten into their part, but when you look at it, it just doesn't make sense unless it's Arco, right? I don't know how you can really do that. FZ, Fort Sonda, which means accent. I don't know how you can do it unless you're using your bow. Okay, so jump in with me at 32. I'm going to count a measure and a half for us. So, one, two, one, two, bum, bum. I'm going to drop the tempo for practicing right now. You're totally going to get there. But for right now, so we can all look at the notes together, I'm actually going to go back to counting in four, and I'm going to drop it down to 120, or it would be 60 if we were counting in two. Bear with me for one second. Look at your music. Every measure has an FZ on the first beat. It's like the thing your teacher always says, stop accenting the first beat. No, 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 do it, do it. I want you to accent the first beat. Okay, jump in with me at 64, please. One, two, three, four. too easy when it's this slow. Jump with me to 84, please. One, two, three, four. face because I want you to get quieter and quieter. It's easy to forget about it when it gets real interesting and syncopated like that. It's easy to just be like bum 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 bum. Stay alive, stay alert to what everybody else is doing. Yeah, we're cool and we're awesome, but we're more awesome when we stay in tune with what everybody else is doing and we don't overpower them, right? 
I mean, we gotta let like a tiny little squeaky violins come through too sometimes. So just stay in tune with that. So here's my recommendation. Yes, I have a big scary Dr. Beat, who cares? I also have an app on my phone called My Tronome. Uh, and there's all kinds of free apps and you can, you guys have metronomes, just get your metronome out. Let's jump in at 146. I got my metronome going back at our old tempo, which is 100, right, for the half note. And it's not that this part is so hard, it's just, it's a lot of really good detail work. So be real crisp with your bow. Look ahead, we have an A-sharp coming up in the next measure. Secret name would be flat if you like that name better. One, two, ready, go. Shift up if you want. see two downs, two ups. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Don't look at it that way. It's always a pickup to the next long note. Forget about this. Pick up. Pick up. Pick up. So we always have a change of bow. If you find yourself doing this hoppy thing, where it's like really uncomfortable and your hands kind of chaining two in a row, it's not it. That's not it. Drop it. Drop it. Don't do that. But it always feels, it should feel like a nice chain of change of bow at the ends of the bow. So when you get out towards the tip, we don't turn around right away and come up bow. We do down up, we get to the frog. We don't turn around right away and do our down bow. We do up down. So it's just a little thing before you turn around. So look at the bowing they have really carefully there. They've done a really good job with that bowing. The one other thing I wanted to tell you was at 174, bow I'm pulling. Can you watch my right arm? It's just a quarter note, but I gotta think ahead about the half note at the end of the measure. If I don't, right, I'm gonna land on my own hand and my frog and on this silver part that's called the ferrule. I'm gonna land right there and it's gonna be, I don't want that. So just yank a lot of bow. Hey, good news, you have an accent. Yay, you get to use that. You have an accent this way and an accent this way. Go for it. They both are equally kind of stompy, so you just go right for it. It'll be. I'm going to skip over 238 because it's so similar to what I've already beaten to the ground back at 64. You know what to do. So join me now at 250. There's not much to prep. If I'm correct about this at 250, we move to 68. I'm clicking this at 100 again because I'm pretty sure the big pulse stays the same. Yum. Bum, 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 bum. So all you need to do is prepare your half notes as triplets. So let's do that at 248. So let's 248. One, two. Triplet, 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 triplet.
The thing that's really helpful <laughs> from a left hand point of view, when you see measure 275, and this will happen earlier in 273. Oh, let me zoom in a little. Mm. Can you see this in my left hand? Here's 275. I'm going to bar this down. I'm going to have my first finger here too, but I'm going to really flatten out my second finger and make a bar. And I'm just barely going to let go of that E string. So if I try to hop back and forth, it's going to probably sound kind of choky. Whoops, wrong way. It's probably going to sound a little choky because I'm probably not going to be able to get the timing perfect of um, getting the left hand and the bow coordinated really, really well. And when it's just a fourth like that, bass is tuned in fourths, right? I know you all know. So I'm going to go back to 273 and do this slowly. So two and one are set up early. Flop that bar down. Open. Set up two and one again. Flop. Open. Can you see that I'm leaving that like a little wooden soldier, right? I'm just going to flop it up and down like a little lever. Here it is slowly from 273. Set up. Flop. exciting and glamorous, I know. All right, this concludes the tutorial. Stay tuned now for exciting things about how to work on measure 64, and we'll go through all of the 10 beat increments uh, with my metronome, so you guys can push yourself all the way up to being rock stars and playing this at the full concert tempo. All right, I'm proud of you. I'll see you soon. Bye. So I'm at 120. Let's go up by 10, because like, it's not that far. Here's 130. Jump back at 64 with me. Um, and if this was too fast, don't do this part. Skip to the next part, okay? But let's go back to 64 and we'll just jump up a little bit at a time. So this would be like we jumped up to 65 if we were in two. All these numbers. Rehearsal 64. One, two, three, four. we go up to right? You get it. I'm just setting all these levels for those of you that want to keep challenging yourself every day. Come back. Measure 64. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. 
Sean, I'm sorry, I started rushing. Ready to hit 160? I'm ready. I don't know, I think I'm getting close to my edge here. So now we're at a half note of 80. So we're creeping up on our tempo. Our goal tempo is 100, which is 200 at this, right? We got it, we're awesome, we can do this. Practicing rocks. Number 64. One, two, three, four. Whenever you tank out is fine. You go back one, and then you just keep pushing forward every day, and then you creep back a little bit, and you push forward. It's progress. Measure 64, our pulse is 180. One, two, three, four. up to 190. Who's still hanging with me? Good. Good. I'm glad you're still here. Back to measure 64. Our pulse is 190. 1, 2, 3, 4. see it. 200! 200! We are there! 200! Victory is ours! Well, once we play this, victory is ours. That's a lot of clacking. Let's do it once at 200 and then I'm going to flop it over to 100 so there's a lot less clacking in our ears. Measure 64, our pulse is our goal pulse of 200! Yes! 1, 2, 3, 4. Clacking. 
But some people find this harder without all the extra beats going on. So if that's you, you're going to need to practice it both ways. So let me just show you something. I didn't mean to like derail this whole video about measure 64, but it's really important that you understand how to do this. So I've got my, my metronome clacking on one and two, big one and two, or if you were counting on four, one and three. So it would go. There's another way to do it. This is a little bit of a brain one. You gotta get this. And, and, and one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two. It's hard to get that started, but if you can do that one, I mean, totally don't do it at 100. Please start that down, down, down. Let's start that down at like 60. Let's start that down at 60 because that's where we started before. And one, two, and one, and two, and one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So you see how the metronome's clicking my two and four? That's a really, really good way to build up your inner metronome. I guess my inner metronome lives here in my stomach. I don't know. I always do that when I talk about rhythm, right? So it's a really powerful way to build it up. And then you don't need a big fancy metronome like I have with all these bells and whistles on it. You just have a regular metronome. You set it to your big two beats and first you practice with it on one and three and then you just pretend it's on two and four. But you have to get that running start, most of us, where you go and, and one, and two, and one, and two. You know what I mean? If you don't, just leave a comment here and I can email you back and explain what it is. <laughs>